Welcome, Gun Runner. Hey everybody, Q&A K the Lead here, and I'm back with another book review for you. And you may remember uh, that about a month or so ago, I reviewed this book, uh, Terrible Old Games You've Probably Never Heard Of by Stuart Ashen. Uh, you also might remember, if you watched that review, that it was basically a re-review, because um, when I went to upload my original review that I'd done when I first got the book, um, it was one of um, many videos that I lost uh, when an external hard drive failed. Um, because it was such a great book, I decided to remake the video for the new channel. And um, in that video, I promised that I would also do a re-review of the follow-up, um, because that was another one that I lost. So there it is, the follow-up, Attack of the Flickering Skeletons, um, also by Stuart Ashen. More terrible old games you've probably never heard of. So it alludes there uh, to it being a sequel on the cover. And uh, there's a few things that I kind of want to, to point out before I start looking at the book. Um, the first is obviously it's a similar kind of square format, but you will notice it is bigger. Um, a good uh, couple of centimetres bigger on each side. Um, so that's always a good thing. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that rather than having the um, the this um, kind of wrap cover it's got um, this one actually might be because it's a backers edition I think there was a different version of it um, because I got sent one of the first books that came out but it's got what they call I believe a lenticular cover so you'll so hopefully the camera picks that up but that moves um, which is pretty cool um, indeed so yeah it's hard back again um, but it has that nice nice cover and that's a continuation of the same game on the back. And actually, something else I want to point out, um, which uh, is quite funny, and Stuart wasn't aware of this until I pointed it out. He hadn't um, had noticed it until I was talking to him about the cover. And that's that both the covers are Atari 8-bit games. This one was Hunter, and that one is Domain of the Undead. So, yeah, Atari 8-bit game on the cover of both books. He said that was completely unintentional. Didn't realise. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, I'm always always want to point out some good Atari love. So yes, this is the follow up. Uh, the first book was such a big success that he made another one, and uh, people have even asked for a third one. He's never got round to doing it. I'm hoping he does because I'd love to see another one. There's still plenty of fodder out there. Uh, one another big difference between um, the first book and the second book, as you'll find out in a moment, is that. Um, this one is also by Unbound, I should mention. That's not what I was going to say. But uh, also Unbound, who did the crowdfunding for the book and stuff. But um, I'm in this book. Um, I did one of the contributions to it, which is one of the things I wanted to point out. Um, after meeting Stuart at the launch of the first book, he asked me to be part of the second book, which was really cool. And um, as a huge fan of um, Stuart... That was really nice of him to do so. So I was really pleased to see that I was in it. So there we go. I'm up there. Uh, it's this interview, Kieran Hawke. It's a bit strange. Because it's not really an interview. It's it's um, more about it's me making a contribution to the book. It's a strange wording there, actually. <laughs> right, so let's have a look what this one's all about. So similar format in that this is about terrible old home computer games. Mostly from British home computers. So there are no console games, there's no E.T. for the 2600 or Action 52 or anything like that in here. This is bad home computer games and the stuff that, a lot of stuff you probably won't have heard of. Some you might know um, and that's basically how it works. It starts off with um, Alfida's own pet on the BBC Micro um, which was based on the... Uh, British TV series of the same name, starring Jimmy Nail. And um, it's by Tynesoft. And one thing I'll show, say straight away is Tynesoft made an awful lot of shitty games. You could probably just make a book on Tynesoft alone. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't really a surprise to see to see that in there. So uh, let's have a quick flick through what else we've got. 
I'm going to want to cover everything. Or is this one I've missed something out here? I think, no, okay. I haven't. So, Baravento, which is some Amiga game. Um, it obviously originates from uh, looking at that. I'm guessing it's Portuguese. Looks like Portuguese. Uh, most disappointing game over ball. Oh, Chili Hill. I won't give. Don't really want to give him any um, coverage. Um, guy's a massive, massive troll on Twitter, so I don't, he's probably someone that he's best uh, not talking about. Um, Belly Bellyal. Another Amiga game I've not heard of. Looks like a rip-off of um, Ghosts and Goblins. Butterfly. Um, Strange Set Expection game that I've never heard of before I um, read this book. Quite hard to, um, to keep turning the pages in this. Uh, Castle Top, an Atari 8-bit game um, that I hadn't played until I saw this book and it made me go and try it and I have to confess it's every bit as terrible as it's made out in this book. But one really interesting thing about Castle Top is that it was done by someone called Stephen McKelvey and all of Stephen's games to the Atari 8-bit are absolutely terrible. We also did California Run, I think he also did Domain of the Undead that's on the cover. Um, and, um, oh, there's a game he did where you're like a penguin. Winter Wally, that's the one. That's terrible as well. Um, but most interestingly, he did the unreleased, for some reason, although it's completely complete, Atari 8-bit port of Ocean, um, Ocean's Hunchback. Uh, no one really knows why it was unreleased, but yes, it was. And he did that. And it basically seems that Castle Top is basically a, a remix of Hunchback. It's basically the same game, but just with different different levels. Um, but even worse, uh, much worse, much worse game design. It's just borders on completely unfair. So yes, um, notorious Stephen McKelvey. And. There's always someone who doesn't seem to quite get the concept. There was in the first book as well. And here's another person who, Daniel Hardcastle, um, official nerd cubed apparently, um, does a Game Boy game. So he didn't quite he didn't quite get the, the home computer thing. Um, but there we go. Hideous commercial failure corner, says a nice C sixty four GS there. Chef on the Oric. Looks like it's kind of a rip-off of Kaboom or something. Obviously not a very good one. Short Circuit. Jimquisition. Uh, it's the Commodore 64 version of Short Circuit. Great film. Crap game by Ocean. That's before Ocean really worked out how to do good film games. They made a real lot of duffers at one point. Around the time they did Short Circuit. And they did like... Miami Vice, Knight Rider and Street Hawk and they did a lot of really bad games based on TV and movies before they kind of figured it out with titles like you know, Platoon and Robocop and stuff Cisco Heat Commodore 64 version I don't remember that being that bad I'm sure I've played it but I'll take their word for it in this book I'll have to play it again Death Kick, Amstrad CPC so yeah, we're getting a good representation of different um, computers in here. Don't know the Amstrad yet. Um, slopes game room. The uh, Dan Emerson he gets it wrong as well by talking about Chris Crossmate. My video on the Mega CD, which again isn't a bloody home computer game, so I'm not sure why that's there. And to be fair, for what it is, it's fine. It's it. It's, you know, it, it is what it says it is, really. I, I don't... It's, it's not completely terrible because of what it, it actually is. You know, you're just mixing up videos, really. And that's all you do. It was, it, there's a whole series of them. They all play exactly the same, just with different videos in each one. If you like Criss Cross, I suppose, you might have, you might have quite enjoyed it. But there we go. 
And there's the cover game, Domain of the End Dead, on the Atari bit, as I said, by Stephen McKelvey, published by Red Rat Software. Um, a really crap rip-off of um, Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, really, really, really crap rip-off. Um, awful in every single way. Then we've got Total Biscuit, the Crystal Maze, uh, on the Acorn or Comedies, apparently. Corner 64, Coin Up Conversion Battle Royal. Let's talk about um, games on the Commodore 64 that were converted twice. So, 720, Afterburner, Bionic Commando. There's lots where there's a European version and there's an American version for some reason. There's Cabal, there's um, Donkey Kong. So, yeah, there's, there's absolutely loads actually on the Commodore 64. You'd be surprised how many there are. So, overall winner, nobody cares. Flintstones are Larry Bundy Jr. Um, we all love Larry. Larry's a, 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 a good, really good guy. We love Larry. So I think that's basically talking about every format, but it is, is uh, an incredibly dull game. In the fact that I think the first level you have to... I can't remember if you see the put wallpaper up or paint a wall. It's one of the two, but my God, I mean, talk about watching paint dry. It literally is that. It's just absolutely bloody awful. Galaxians on the Commodore uh, VIC-20. Um, I actually, funny enough, I was playing that recently um, for one of my books, not the VIC-20 version, no, the Spectrum version, I reviewed it. Um, that wasn't very good either, so. Crap, Galaxians clone, basically. Hairraiser, Prelude and Finale. That's a really interesting story. I won't go into it here. Kansas Munchman, Electron. So, as it says, a really crap Pac-Man clone, as you probably guessed. Here's my entry. I should mention, actually, the, um, the little teletext um, uh, avatars in the book were all done by um, the brilliant Horsenberger, um, who's really well known for his teletext drawings. Um, he did such a good job with all of these and it's amazing the likeness he got actually considering he was just using um, blocks. But yeah, so that's... And the other thing actually, he did give me a few choices. So I still got on my computer the other ones um, that he showed me and then I got to choose which one he, they used, which was ended up being this one. So uh, yeah, that's that's um, Human Killing Machine, which originally um, Ashton said, oh no, cause it's a bit obvious. Um, but then he thought about it and went, no, 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 actually, you're right. It, ha it does have to be in the book. And that's the reason why. There was lots of more obscure games that I chose, but I just I, I have such a, a, a great story around Human Killing Machine. Uh, I felt needed to be told and I hate the, I hated it so much and I was so disappointed by it. And it still makes me angry. And then it turns out Stuart agrees and Stuart picked up the game in the same way that I did. So, um, yeah. And she says there, Stuart says, the, Arter the Atari ST version of Human Killing Machine is one of my, sorry, is one of the reasons why I started my original Terrible Old Games video series. I paid money for it and needed to share the pain with others. So yeah, we had similar stories on that. I actually uh, talked about the ZX Spectrum version here, um, but it could probably equally apply to any of the versions, to be honest. I think it does show all of the versions here. I can't remember. I, did, I remember including screenshots for all the versions. Uh, they're all from the Spectrum. Oh, there we go. There's the ST version. And there's another Stuart thing. Because I talked about the Home Computer Club, which is where I got it from. Stuart says, I was also a member of the Home Computer Club. I once got their Game of the Month, which was the movie tie-in Predator for the Spectrum. As a direct result, I wasn't a member of the Home Computer Club for much longer. <laughs> I quite like Predator. It wasn't that bad. It's all right. But I played the ST version. I don't think I played the Spectrum version, thinking about it. Mystery Manor, ZX Spectrum. So it's like Cluedo, basically, but without the license, it looks like. Bambi Software, whoever they were. Minsky's Arcade Hall of Shame. Good old Minsky, we're talking about all sorts of things, like Street Fighter, Dragon's Lair. Oh, Thunder Packland. 
all sorts of stuff. Uh, Laura, uh, not sure who she is, contributed to Let's Play Video Games .com. She chose a, a console game as well, Barbie Game Girl. So there's a few people in this one actually um, went against the the concept. Squidge update page. So more about Squidge. Pro Soccer 2190 on the Atari ST. I still haven't played that actually. I, I meant to play it after reading this book originally. And then for some reason never got round to it. And I must play it. I must feature it in one of my books. It looks quite interesting. I like football games so I really want to try it. Uh, Robo Bolt on the Commodore 64. Terrible ripoff of Paradroid. Uh, terrible old game covers that you've probably never heard of. Oh, sorry, you've probably never seen before. So there's all sorts of stuff here. I've actually featured a lot of these in a video I did on bad um, covers from games. Then what we've got here. Amsoft, uh, Roland on the Run, which I think is a Frogger ripoff, if I remember rightly. The uh, Nostalgia Nerd, he chose Viz. Um, I can't agree with that actually because um, I actually thought Viz was quite cool. I quite enjoyed it. Thought I had good humour, don't agree with that whatsoever. I remember it getting quite good reviews at the time as well, so I'm not sure about that. Worst joystick? Oh, that really was a bad joystick, the Cheetah Tortoise. Absolutely terrible. Uh, Top Banana, Tori ST. Um, I quite liked Top Banana. Um, admittedly, I've not played the ST version. I played it on the Aiken Archimedes. I quite liked it. It's kind of a bit like Rainbow Islands. Kim Justice also failed to get the um, the. Um, I think in the first book, Kim, for some reason, chose a console game, and it's supposed to be a computer game. She's done the same again here by choosing WC WCW NWA Thunder, um, which isn't completely terrible, in my opinion. Yeah, not a, not a home computer game. Wet Le Mans on the Commodore 64. Um, not as good as the Spectrum or Amstrad conversion. It's not that bad, though. And there's the Horsenberger appreciation page, which is great to see, because he does such fantastic arts. There's Sonic, there's Zool, there's Pac-Man, there's Orko. Um, great stuff. So, yes, um, another just brilliant book. Um, even better than the first book. Um, loads of great stories, loads of great content. Um, loads of great people contributed to it. Um and uh, in my opinion, um, well worth um, grabbing if you haven't already got it. Um, it it's probably one of my favourite retro books out there, along along with the, the first one that Stuart did. So if you don't already have it, go buy it now. I hope you enjoyed my look at Attack of Flickering Skeletons. And uh, I'll see you all again for another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.